Hey, hey, what's up? How you doing today? Had to change cameras again. I'm not happy. Not cool. But hopefully this won't be pure crap. So I'm going to show you how I did some maintenance and sharpened the cutters on this uh, earthquake wood chipper shredder. Um, a lot of them are very similar even though they have different names. They rebrand them and they're, they all look kind of similar. But it's amazing how much work you can get done with one of these things especially going through that feed tube that's where it does its best cutting that I've seen in my opinion but I had some problems with this one so we'll go over that um, first things first if yours has any cracks any on that plastic hopper grab you some HVAC strap and cut it and I used some of this uh, these short little half inch lathe screws so just Hold up your HVAC strap, put a mark with your Sharpie, and punch a hole with a center punch or something, and pilot bit drill, and throw it in. I may put another one on there before I'm done, but anyway, to the main thing, uh, this rear assembly back here, first things first, grab you a half inch wrench for taking all these nuts off around here to get the hopper off. Um, this one was crashing into itself right here which is probably a good reason why it was not cutting very well back here um, the reason it was crashing into itself and tearing itself up beating itself up is because this this short little screw came out it's got an allen head around right here down here and I didn't notice that until I took this thing all the way apart I should have been able to see it I could have seen it noticed it through that that round part you take off when it gets jammed up and you have to clear it but I didn't know that so I put some busted out the old awful stick welder and did some butt ugly farm welds on here and because it was really tearing itself up it had split down in there and sometimes this thing would stick in that groove that it had cut in there so it should be good now um, what else I sharpened all these the uh, the two triangle shaped ones you can see how bad beat up that one was I flipped it around so it's not using that side anymore but still I sharpened these and the short ones and uh, so it should cut a lot better now I would think one way to find out right what else uh, first things first or whatever you need a 5 16 allen head for these uh, socket head cap screws or an 8 millimeter fits okay better than nothing but go for the 5 16 if you can put your finger on one um, these are all 3 8 coarse thread so it's 3 8 uh, 16 in case you got to run a tap down some of these holes which I did one of the coarse screws was beat up bad enough I had to run a die over it to clean up the threads um, but while, while you're at it you might might as well run your tap down in there. Um, what else? I used plenty of anti-seize compound on the threads when I put it back together. And I'll probably use, go ahead and put some extra grease. Hold on. Technical difficult. Put some extra grease on those big uh, washers and spacers before I get done. And Always use a toothbrush. Wouldn't want to have to get too nasty, too dirty, would I? So these things... Pay attention when you take it apart, so you remember how it, how it goes. These these bent cutters go closer to the bracket. Then you got your fat spacer and the big washer. These you got the fat spacer right behind it, then the triangle, then the big washer. So pay attention to it when you're taking it apart. Um, the whole thing turns counterclockwise, and something else you want to check on yours is it, it crashes into itself right there on that big shaft so I put some more butt ugly farm welds on there on both sides so maybe that'll help keep that from tearing up as bad but eh, you probably don't really even have to do anything but uh, the, the one in the middle is a fi uh, 3 8 fine thread so that's what 3 8 24 I think and it holds the whole cutter assembly on there if you want you can take grab your half inch wrench socket impact driver whatever and take this whole thing 
the rest of it apart which it comes off with the wheels and all and then you gotta prop up the engine but it's got a nice big shaft with a uh, uh, a key a square keyway in it and uh, put plenty of grease on that when I put it back together so hopefully it won't seize up but but that that uh, 3 8 fine screw is all that holds that big thing on there so make sure you get that good and tight what else you might have to use a 9 16 wrench on the nuts on these short ones the two that stoppers that keep it from crashing into itself on the back side I just put a 3 8 hex on there because the original was long gone but um, I think that's about it. Oh, you might want to, if you're having trouble getting it apart or back together, you might want to use some, some more HVAC strap. You might could uh, drill it out the right size and use it, you know, three-eighths hole on the other if you need, to, need it to hold still while you're getting it apart or back together. I think that's about it. But it, it cuts way better through that tube there. I was looking online and saw Lowe's sells an electric one for like less than half the price of one of these. So if I was going to buy one, that's probably what I'd get because it's 14 amp that turns like over 4,000 RPM. And uh, I don't know how many horsepower it is, but it's got to be at least probably one and a half, I would think. But 14 amps, that's, that's times 120, that's your power in watts. So. Uh, that's probably what I'd get if I had power, electric power close by. But anyway, good luck with yours. Be careful. It's kind of dangerous. Keep rocking with docking. Check out this tape I got, man. This tape is awesome. I don't know what's on the B side though. Let's see what it plays. Grinds a little bit. Women. Sure. 